to make the picture complete that in order to eliminate the afflictions from the root, we need this kind of understanding of uh, emptiness or selflessness, yeah, the lack of that concrete I am me. Yeah, so uh, everything that appears to our mind is not actually reality, right? But sometimes we believe it's reality. Yeah? So uh, you have those shows on TV, uh, I once saw in Bangalore on TV, a man with a mask and then he shows, <laughs> he does all those tricks on the show on TV and then he shows you how he, how he, how he does it. This one who knows? Yeah, it's a show about how magicians do all Actually, things. yeah, yeah. So, so the first time you totally believe, right? You think, how is this possible? Then you see how he does the trick, and then you think, ah, oh, yeah, okay, now I see it's a trick. Or the train, Indian train, yeah, very easy. You know, it's a very good example. You know, oh, we're moving. If you look at the platform, oh no, no, it's the other train. <laughs> you know, this, you know the one. Yes. So, <laughs> the time, the time. You think you're moving, you convince you're moving, <laughs> right? Is, is reality? No. But you, you believe it. Then the correct consciousness arises, aha, platform. Realize, ah, oh, we're not the moving, it's the other one. You know? Then that concept of we moving doesn't arise anymore, right? Because correct consciousness came about. Yeah? So, so everything that appears to us is not always reality. So also this concrete I am me, yeah, that causes those afflictions to rise, so very innate and very strong, is actually not in accordance with reality. So you can analyze body and mind the moment they're changing, so there's no place for something that concrete, what we call I am me. Yeah, so that has to then be eliminated in a similar way as these uh, analytical meditation. Yeah, you see how concrete it appears, and then actually you analyze. It cannot exist the way it appears, because body and mind are moment they're changing. Yeah, so conventionally, we exist, our body and mind exist, but there's no place for that concreteness. Yeah, so that's uh, the thing I just want to say in the end to make it a complete picture. Yeah, so then actually you learn, have learned, we talked about, you know, what is suffering, yeah, the first noble truth, and then uh, what is the cause of suffering we talked about, yeah, and now also what is the root cause of suffering is this grasping at a self of ignorance. Yeah, so, so that can be eliminated or not, yes, because. It is not in coincidence with reality and it can be eliminated with the correct form of consciousness. Yeah, and they're not innate part of the mind and afflictions are impermanent. Yeah. Yeah, so so then what is the method? Yeah, the, the four noble truth or the true paths is then basically this kind of meditation techniques we talked about for a simplified way. Yeah. Of course, if you give a traditional explanation then I have to say, yeah, you need a direct perception of emptiness on the part of seeing and beyond, and on the part of seeing you eliminate all a quiet grasping at the self and not part of seeing, oh sorry, meditation, the innate grasping at the self. So that's maybe beyond the uh, mindfulness for professionals. <laughs> so <laughs> so but anyway, that makes the part complete. So for a simplified form, uh, it's, it's very similar. Yeah? The, the parts or methods, so to say, to, to apply, they're not the real methods in the traditional uh, context of the explanation of the uh, true parts, but it's a similar aspect, you know, similar way that by this placement meditation we get concentration. With this concentration we do the analytical meditation. With the analytical meditation we analyze the faults of the affliction and the benefits of the antidote and exchange. In a similar way, to eliminate the root of the afflictions, we analyze how the self appears, very concrete from its own side. Then we analyze with an analytical meditation, it cannot appear the way it exists. Yeah? Uh, do you say? <laughs> It cannot, sorry, it's the other way around. it cannot exist the way it appears, yeah? it cannot exist the way it appears because our body and mind at the moment are changing. Yeah? So then we use that in analytical meditation uh, to, to you know, analyze that actually that concrete self that appears in that way is not reality. And then the real uh, elimination of suffering happens because then if you take away the cause for the afflictions to arise, then the afflictions don't arise anymore. And then there is what is called nirvana or peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. So it says in the, in the Buddhist doctrine, there's four seals of Buddhist uh, philosophy. You know, yeah. all compounded phenomena are impermanent. Yeah. All uh, contaminated aspects are in, in the nature of suffering. Yeah. And everything is uh, lacks true existence or emptiness. Yeah. It's in the nat nature of selflessness. Yeah. And then the last one, uh, nirvana is peace. Yeah. So that's actually summarizing. Uh, this is what we talked about a bit later. But any questions? 
regarding this or, or anything else? <laughs> uh, can you please repeat once more uh, how to make the new job switch? Allez. Do you have a few months? <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's the Buddhist most important teaching, most difficult to comprehend. So actually, the root cause is this ignorance of grasping at a very concrete I am me. Yeah, so when we get angry at a situation, at a person, there's a very concrete sense of I. You know, we use a lot. I, me, myself. You know, there's a rap song from Run DMC or... No, I was being corrected last time I said Run DMC. And people say, no, no, it's not Run DMC. It was another one. Who <laughs> had a song, me, myself and I. Anyway, it's an American rap, you know, rap, rap band. And also they did research in the US, uh, persons who say the term I, me, myself, how many times they, 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 they talked about those, you know, expressed those terms within 10 minutes, and then they checked their health records. Very interesting. People with a more self-centered attitude, they're more inclined to, to uh, you know, heart diseases, etc., etc. Very interesting. Yeah, so, so that also from science you can see that this grasping at this concrete I and me causes actually more suffering, you know, and it causes those afflictions to arise, and also those afflictions they cause suffering, as we saw with the Twitter, uh, you know, example uh, being used in in, in uh, gather scientific data with people using verbal abuse or ventilating their anger in Twitter, and then uh, in relation with the health records, especially with uh, cardiac or failure and and. and heart disease, very, yeah. So that's been proven basically by science that actually also this concrete grasping at itself uh, is actually a cause for suffering. Yeah, so when the Buddha 2,500 years said, is the root cause of, of, of all the suffering. Because based on this concrete I am me, uh, we generate afflictions like anger, attachment, jealousy, pride. Yeah, so if you take away that concreteness, or sorry, that, that, that apprehension of that concrete I am me, you take away the result, right? And take it that away, then you take away affliction. If you take away affliction, you take away suffering. Is it a little bit... Uh, what, e what emptiness is, then, uh, in the monastery we started for four years, six days a week, <laughs> <laughs> and, and every day for many hours. Yeah. So it's only the Dalai Lama, uh, showing the humble aspect, of course, though I haven't realized emptiness, but showing the humble aspect, says, after, he st after in my in mid-twenties, I generated a lot of interest in emptiness. And now I can say, I slowly start to think liberation is possible. <laughs> this is from uh, how many decades? Like 60, 60, 60, years. 60 years. 60 years of study and uh, contemplation is only Dalai Lama, not every ordinary person. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but, that's a, but in general speaking, emptiness is... Uh, this is only a humble aspect now, of course, so he says realize emptiness, but... He shows us that it's, it's not that easy. Yeah, you need a lot of uh, merits and a lot of reasoning. And, you know, it's, it takes, I remember when I was just a Buddhist in the Netherlands, 93, I went to His Holiness teaching in, in uh, Vajrayogini Institute in France. France. And His Holiness was teaching the ninth chapter of Shantideva, the uh, chapter on emptiness. <laughs> and I was just a Buddhist. And Thupten Jimpa was still a monk then, a very good translator. So he was translating and I was listening. Didn't make any sense. <laughs> so I took out the earphone and just listened to his own. <laughs> In Tibetan, was <we'll> saying. <laughs> you know, so it's. Uh, yeah. It takes time. The blueness of blue. Huh? The blueness of blue. Yeah. 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 Power of habit, habituation. I mean, mm. I didn't quite get that one. Mm. Power of, of, of habituation. Yeah, habituation. The more you habituate your mind to something, the easier it will become to do it. Same with driving a car, no? The first time, or oh, the gear is here, and the fender is there, and you know, first you have to think, right? All together. But then after some time, it's automatic, right? It's kind of, by the power of habituation, everything is possible. You know, so also, if you habituate your mind to something positive, yeah, again and again and again, it will be easier to generate that mindset. You know? That's how our mind actually Functions, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, you said, uh, of course, it's scientifically also established mm. that uh, 
change in the mind mm. during the change in the brain. brain. Mm -hmm. Could you kindly give a few examples? Ali. As, uh, what kind of change in the mind Ali. has really brought, what kind of change in the brain? Mm. So mostly, mostly like mindfulness, meditation, those kinds of things, bring the prefrontal cortex, you know, which has mm -hmm. a lot to do with, with analytic approach and solving problems, yeah. Uh, there's a difference between people, of course, depends how many hours to be meditated upon. If you're really interested, you should read uh, uh, Richard, Richard Davidson's. Uh, he's a world-leading neuroscientist regarding uh, this retreat. And there's one book of his research, very popular, uh, by Sharon Berkeley. She's a uh, New York-based journalist. And she wrote a book, Train Your Mind, Change Your Brain. Yeah? Uh, Berkeley. Yeah, she also uh, co uh, wrote a book with Jeffrey Schwartz, The Mind in the Brain. Yeah, so she's quite a famous in this field. And her book on Change Your Mind, oh, sorry, Train Your Mind, Change Your Brain, yeah, that book actually is based on uh, Richard Davidson's research regarding uh, mindfulness meditation, compassion meditation. He is a neuroscientist and how it affects the brain, basically. Yeah, so there is a research also, we had a visitor from Boston University who did research, similar research together with uh, Harvard Medical School and she told us very interesting results that even a group, they don't have much fun, so they had, the groups are like 20, 30 subjects. Yeah, so she did a research of uh, a group of, of people, mindfulness meditation, a group of people Compassion, meditation, and a control group. They just got lectures about health and everything. Yeah, so they send them to an MRI scan before and after. Yeah, so within two weeks. Yeah, of training, including homework, there was a different difference in the prefrontal cortex being uh, noticed. Yeah, and not only that, also, then they did another part of that project was they were, had been put up headphones and they listened to people suffering crying or, or shouting and then the people who had mindfulness meditation they acted in a very neutral perspective without getting agitated or whatsoever people with uh, compassion meditation they want to act want to help you know very interesting so then you see actually habituation you know of the mind actually within a few weeks can bring a, a significant uh, result or effect very interesting uh, yeah so if you read the book of uh, Sharon Berkeley, it's very interesting. Change your uh, mind, uh, train your mind, change your brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking yeah. perhaps of the best, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they have mindfulness training and all that. Yeah. But there's no reference to the Buddha or anything like that. So yeah. It, the, why is it that? Yeah, but it's understandable because I think it's just a skillful means of people who do it. You don't have to call it Buddhism, right? If it's beneficial for society in a secular way, then... I think that's a good idea. I mean, do you think... No, the, the, the thing is, you should always clarify, this is Buddhist teaching and this is not a Buddhist teaching, right? So if it's just merely to receive some happiness in this life and, and solve the problems, then we can say it's not a really authentic kind of Buddhist teaching, but it's one aspect they take out of uh, Buddhism and made it a little bit more secular and use it. Yeah? So from a Buddhist perspective, as you see, it's only Dalai Lama, it's very secular in certain ways. If it's beneficial for society, that's fine. Yeah, so, especially in the West, if you call things Buddhism or, or Hinduism or religion, then people, they, they don't like to engage. Yeah? But if you bring it in a way of a secular uh, you know, presentation and there's benefit for society, then why not? You don't call it Buddhism then, but if there's some benefit being gained, then that's fine. You know? yeah. So, but always I think it's important for the people involved in those projects to make very clear distinction, you know, uh, that's why now in this presentation also I try to say, you know, to make a complete picture, you, you know, you have to always say clearly what is actually the Buddhist presentation is, if it's been asked or if you present it within the Buddhist context, yeah. So that uh, that's important always to because that's true. There's a lot of mindfulness meditation and people start to think, oh, that's that's. I'm a Buddhist now, you know, or <laughs> it's very popular in the West, it's very cool to be Buddhist, you know, just do a little bit of mindful meditation, walk around with a mala or something, and, <laughs> you know, you say, yeah, I'm a Buddhist, but actually they don't know what Buddhism is all about. You know?
So that's th that's one. Yeah, that's true. That's one concern to to have. But from a general perspective, yeah, if there's benefit for society, then even as Holiness has different projects of translating the science of the mind, taking out of the sources of the Buddhist teaching, and presented in a very secular way. You know, and that's why we also have these kind of conferences, of Mind and Life Institute, etc., etc. You know, to to learn from each other, to benefit society, basically. Yeah. And that's the Buddha's teaching in one way is to bring happiness to humankind, right? And of course, lead them the ultimate goal is leading to enlightenment or nirvana. Yeah. So that's in the Buddhist teaching very clear. Yeah, the uh, good re rebirth, uh, liberation, and enlightenment. Yeah. But on the side, yeah, in our tradition, there's not that much mentioning about the happiness of this life, but in the Pali tradition, for example, in the Pali Sutras, we can also see the Buddha teaching morality to people to achieve happiness in this life. And then slowly, slowly, step by step, by the skillful means of the Buddha, he leads them to high levels of development, maybe in future lifetimes. You know? So it's just a skillful means of, and that's what the Sonic Dalai Lama is doing as well, you know, it's just very skillfully, you know, very broad-minded, you know, do different aspects to benefit society, and on the long term, lead them all to enlightenment. You know? yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, um, there were two terrorist attacks, Are one they? in New York and Are the they? other in Kashmir. Mm. So, what do you think is the mm. role of mindful meditation there? Uh, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, if, if, if the persons, you know, who, who commit those acts, not interested, you cannot do much, right? But we can help other people to prevent them coming in those kind of uh, decision-making situations. That's what mindfulness helps, or these kind of aspects of, 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 of spirituality. But I mean, in one way, if a person commits something like that, then if there's no interest from their side, it's very difficult for us to do something, right? Isn't it? It's very yeah, it's sad that, uh, that those things happen, but we cannot change the world. You know? We can only start with ourselves and lifetime after lifetime progress and then <coughs> lead beings to enlightenment. You know? that's, that's, yeah, that's reality in one way, some is like that. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. Can there be, uh, in response to these attacks, can our responses be mindful mm. to make a change happen? Because like, mm. like yeah. you would say, you cannot change the other person. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we can give a start. Yeah. Like for example, I don't know if yesterday's uh, explosion in New York has mm. been yet mm. has been announced as a terrorist mm. attack. It was announced as an explosion. Yeah. But they clearly said that it is not. It does not have a terrorist. Mm. There is no animal. Mm. Today, there are, the version is different. Today's version is different. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not aware of that. Like yeah. So they've identified mm. the person. They have. Yeah. Mm. But yesterday they were calling it a no, no, no. Mm. I mean, if you think about a person, that's what I always find beneficial. We cannot change the world, right? But if you think about a person like His Holiness Dalai Lama, what His Holiness does for the world, for world peace, you know, it's incredible. Of course, His Holiness also cannot change the whole world. You know? But if he can become like His Holiness, you know, if he can become like a person like that, then you know, we can do so much more. And so that should all be our main focus for the time being. And then you can, I mean, of course, is also, Buddha also cannot change the world, right? It depends also on karma and afflictions of beings. But at least we can help a bigger group of beings, right? So if you think it in that way, then, yeah, those things happen in samsara, right? I mean, it's by the power of karma and afflictions, all kind of people engage in all kind of activities. As I just mentioned, the person in prison, right? Those, those terrorists, also their minds are just overpowered by those afflictions. Yeah, there's no control. Is that kind of emotional hijack, right? Yeah. So, from an outsider, we cannot tell them, "Hey, come and sit and you meditate, you meditate." Yeah. That's not going to work, right? So, uh, in that way, we have to be realistic. Yeah. In that way, we have to think: if we work on ourselves, though it might take some time, and we can become like a person like the Buddha or like as long as Dalai Lama, then we can benefit society on a very, very big scale. You know. So then, yeah, we cannot. Even the Buddha uh, cannot. You know, change people like that. I mean, the Buddha sometimes happened. The Buddha walked here, here, and another person came here. The Buddha wanted to subdue, and then the Buddha, the person walks in other direction. Then the Buddha comes in front, and the person walks in another direction. You know, so then yeah, we cannot. You know, so but if you think in that way, I find it always helpful. You know, if you uh, 
think about to you know become a better human being yourself and try to dedicate everything to become like a enlightened being like his holiness and you can do so much more for society no Pre? Pra? yeah you know when i'm doing my swimming pool and i'm doing mm. my meditation and i'm very calm mm. and I'm very peaceful and mm. very happy mm. in touch with my soul mm. in touch with the spiritual state yeah but i have to engage with the rest of the world mm. and the competitive world mm. and it keeps me it's difficult it's yeah i wonder where my meditation mm. goes yeah <laughs> so, but then i realized one thing and one thing when i was telling the his holiness speak mm. Mm. He would hear um, uh, s- terrible stories of mm. what was happening to his own people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, but I still get a good night's sleep. Yeah. I still am yeah. calm. Yeah. And uh, he said, if I can do that, I'm sure you can do it too. Yeah. So that was something that really touched yeah. me. Yeah. And it's not that he, and the other thing is, of course, that I always remember that the Palestinian people also mm. lost their homeland. Mm-hmm. But their leadership was different. Mm. They started the whole concept of suicide bombing. Mm. They invented it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not to, I'm not to say that I'm not for the Palestinian cause, please mm. don't fear. But look at the leadership mm. of His Holiness, the Lai Lama. Yeah. He's kept six million people non-violent. Mm. Yeah. That's an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I take inspiration from that. Mm. But still, I tell you, Hmm. When I'm meditating, it's perfect. When I'm out <laughs> there, it is imperfect. Yeah. So that's that's uh, one thing here. Uh, for Miss Holiness, is totally true. I think that's, that's definitely you know. Uh, in that way, if you if you have a problem, yeah, and you cannot solve it in this case, right? And then worrying about it, it doesn't help, right? So that's why His Holiness says I still get a good sleep, because His Holiness is so skillful. If there's something to be done, he does it. Right? And if there's too many obstacles, then temporarily, just maybe leave it for the time and then move forward. That attitude is a very positive attitude we should also try to develop. Because most of the mental suffering is then prevented. Yeah, because if there's a problem, we've got to think about it and worry about it, and, and then there's more mental suffering, right? Yeah, which doesn't solve anything. Yeah? So there's one aspect. And the other aspect of your singing bowl meditation, I mean, if you're happy with that, that's fine. But, what I said here, same with this concentration meditation. If you do displacement meditation, right, you will be, uh, become more happy. And more happiness, more peace of mind, more calm. But that by itself is not enough. That's why I talk, talked about analytical meditation. In order to change the mind, you need to analyze. You need to do the analytical meditation. Because if you just have a temporary peace of mind, without really dealing with different aspects inside, with analyzing it, then you never move forward, right? So if you be able to do that, then you see an example of his holiness, whatever situation his holiness meets, he doesn't get disturbed. Yeah? So that kind of meditation, if you have that, then wherever you go, uh, you know, then you don't lose that peace of mind anymore. You know what I mean? So that's what Shantideva, <laughs> he said, you know, you can escape every difficulty in the world, try to, but if you go there, difficulty you go there, there's another one coming. You cannot escape. So if the whole world is filled with thorns, you know, you, you can't walk because you hurt your feet everywhere. So you can think, oh, what do I do? Can I cover the whole world in leather? Impossible, right? But you can't cover your feet. Meaning that you can train your own mind and deal with every situation. But you cannot prevent every situation from coming. Yeah? Yeah? Maybe you stop when it's already 820. So, uh, also try to dedicate and pray, yeah, so in that way, it also helps. And sometimes, if we try to, if you have a good intention, yeah, and then we try to solve a problem, and things don't work out the way uh, we expected, yeah, it's, n- it's not always possible, but we can dedicate and also pray for it to do it in the future, yeah, so also here, trying to dedicate and pray that all sentient beings, without exception, yeah, friend, enemy, strangers, that they may never be parted from these precious kind of uh, thoughts, or way of life, or, or faith, or religion, or, you know, to transform the mind to become better human beings. So I also try to dedicate all sentient beings to never be parted from these kind of teachings. Yeah? I also try to dedicate that uh, beings like His Holiness Dalai Lama may have very long, healthy lives, and uh, all their wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. Yeah? I also try to dedicate. 
and then also to want to run self, yeah, in order to be of benefit of others, also generates these kind of realizations, yeah, of renunciation, bodhicitta, emptiness, yeah, so to progress on the path to lighten, so try to dedicate uh, for that for yourself, yeah, so try to uh, make a prayer, a strong commitment that you go and go in that direction, yeah. Jangan <laughs> Okay, thank you very much.